Hi, my name's Andy. Today I'm going to show you how to do a general repair on a car. Uh, I'm going to start off by cleaning the metal, making it all nice and shiny clean. But before we do that, we're going to have to wear some safety equipment, which is the goggles and obviously a mask not to uh, breathe in all the dust. Put the mask on. There you go. cleaned it all up, cleaned it all inside there, I'm going to use uh, uh, an old tool of mine, uh, this is called a jet spot, and what I should be doing is using this to weld pins into the groove and as close as possible. I'll just plug it in, get the pins. And what we do with this machine is, here we are, just put the pin. What we're going to do is, we're going to get there, we start at the beginning of the repair, which is around about here. And then what we do, we just push on there. And it welds the pin on there. Hopefully that pin will be fixed on there nice and, nice and good, which it is. And what we do, we start by a little slide out. to the next stage and we, what we do we put another pin very close always make sure to put the pins very close together a lot of people they separate them too far apart that is not what you want you need to get a very close quarters it takes a little bit longer but it's the correct way to do it you've got to get them in close that way you pull all the dent out slowly when we when we go across the repair repeat the procedure like I said close again Okay. Always remember not to pull it too hard because you don't want to the metal to really bulge out. So try and just be gentle with it. Obviously use your common sense to see where you're going to bring pull the pins out level. Very important. Right, just one more there and then we should be done. I don't want to go right to the end, it doesn't really matter. As long as the majority of the repair is out, as you can see there, the way I've done it. Then we'll just do one more pin. That's lovely. Right, what we're going to do now is just cut these pins off. And I'm using a, a pair of cutters. Now what you could do, you could just hold it. Uh, the metal on these pins are quite soft, so they, you can easily cut them. But always wear safety goggles, just in case, you never know. They cut pretty easily. You don't, what you don't want to do is wobble them and try and get them off. To pull them off like that, because what will happen is you'll end up with a hole in the panel, and then what you're going to have to do is MIG weld it up. So try to cut them off. Best thing to do is cut them off, and then uh, you grind what's left there. Bear in mind, the metal is going to get hot, so it's always wise to use a, uh, get a bucket close by with a bit of cloth, so grind one pin away at a time, and then what that'll do, that will also shrink the metal so it doesn't wobble. Put the goggles back on. What I'm using here is a little air grinder, it's the safest thing to use. What I normally do, I don't, there's no need for this yet, because I'm not getting the metal that hot. What I'll do, I'll grind them all down and then I'll take it from there. Every re remember, every repair is going to be different. <laughs> what we'll do, we give that a chance to cool down. And then what I'm going to rub my hand over it to make sure that I've got no high spots, which I'll explain to you in a minute. Right, I'm feeling my hand over it. Always feel with the palm of your hand. 
So what you do, you just fill, and you fill that bit, press onto the panel, and feel it, and make, to see where the high and low spots are. And wherever the high spots are, what we do, we use a panel beating hammer, just to tap them down a bit. Right, the hammer I'm gonna use is a pointed hammer. So here we go, I'm feeling with the palm of my hand, and I've got some couple of ice spots coming up. So I'll gently, very gently tap that. No need to go mad. Tap it down, feel it. A little bit higher. Right? Sometimes with a, a small area like this, I said don't use the fingers, but when you're feeling like this, you can. But if you're going to just do the top, like I'm feeling on this top area, to make sure there's no high spots, you can use just that part of your your finger. I've got an area here, which I keep tapping it, but it keeps seems to bounce back to me. So obviously it's not gonna tap down. You don't wanna smash it down and like out of aggravation. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to using this tool. Not only just welds the pins, it also shrinks the metal, and I'm gonna show you how. Right, what I'm gonna do here, because obviously, as I said, the metal is high here, it's proud, and I keep hitting it, tapping it down with a hammer, but it seems to be bouncing back. That's because the metal has stretched. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this tool again, and what we're gonna do, without the pin, we're just gonna heat a small area here. Now sometimes you can use a bit of cloth and, a, and some water to cool it down, but because it's only a small area, I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the, the machine's brass to absorb most of the heat once I've shrunk it. Once again, just feel again roughly where you're going to put the machine to shrink it to make sure you're getting in the correct area. As you can see, all I've done is heated that area just above the pin there, exactly where I wanted it, because that was the high point. I'm going to feel it now, and as, as it is, it's, it's shrunk it down really nicely. I'm just going to feel the rest of the damage, just to make sure it doesn't need it. Yep, I've got a high area here, I'll hold the machine on there, let the machine absorb the heat. Because too much heat will cause stretching. Like so. That's lovely. Now we're ready for the next stage. I'm going to use an orbital sander, it's got um, uh, a bag, a dust bag there, so obviously it's got the holes in the machine and the holes in the disc. I'm using a, an 80 disc. As you can see, all the holes are lined up, very important, otherwise the dust is going to go in the air. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to feather out all, what I've, all, all the, the grinding marks here to give it a nice edge for when the filler goes on. There we go. Plug it in. As you can see, I've feathered it right out now, as before. It's given me a nice little edge. What I'll do, when I put the filler on, I'll explain. I'm gonna get it from there like that, which is the next step. Right, as you can see, what I've done is, I've masked off the bumper, because I don't wanna get no filler on it. What I'm doing here is, um, it's very important, it's time for the filler. I've got it all ready now, as you see. Um, when you're going to put the filler on, make sure, just look at the, just look at the repair and think to yourself, how much filler do I need for that? You don't want to over mix a load of filler and then throw a lot away. So I've got here, what I'm just, I'm just using an old uh, bowl, bit of a, bit of wood here, just to mix the filler on. Um, that's the hardener, and I'm going to be. They say, they say use ten percent of the hardener. I would say. That amount will be enough for that. Always best to use a, a latex glove. Again, safe getting any filler on your hand.